HTC's One M8 has turned a lot of heads since it was announced back in March, but Xiaomi's Mi 4 has also garnered a lot of attention for its build quality, high-end specs, and low price. Can it compete with HTC's flagship for 2014? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Xiaomi Mi 4 versus the HTC One M8. Before we get too far into this comparison, we want to thank 28 Mobile for supplying us with a Mi 4 for review. You can purchase your very own Mi 4 or browse dozens of other handsets for sale by clicking the link in the description below or going to 28mobile.com. Both the One M8 and Mi 4 were designed and built with incredible precision. They're two of the best looking and feeling Android handsets around today, no question about it. Still, their designs are quite different. The Mi 4 from Xiaomi has a more boxy, industrial design. Its core and trim is a machine stainless steel. It's like a strange balance between the iPhone 5S and Lumia Icon. Undoubtedly, the worst part of the Mi 4's design is the glossy plastic on the backside. It makes the phone unnecessarily slick and contradicts the steel chassis. The One M8, as many of you already know, has a curved design, which doesn't exactly help when using the phone while it's laying on a flat surface. But the M8's casing is almost entirely metal, and the backside just sort of fades into the sides and front. This makes the device look and feel thinner and lighter than the Mi 4, which actually isn't true. The M8 is marginally taller, wider, thicker, and heavier than the Mi 4. Despite these differences, both have chamfered edges on their metal trim and have similar placement of certain buttons and ports around their edges. And both have that certain heft which seems to imply great build quality. The major difference in design is speaker placement. The 1M8's dual front-facing boom sound speakers are positioned up front, while the Mi 4's single speaker is found along the bottom edge. Internally, these two phones have very few similarities, and the Mi 4 seems to have the upper hand. Both have the Snapdragon 801 chipset with quad-core Crate 400s, though the M8 is clocked at 2.3GHz and the Mi 4 at 2.5GHz. But the M8 has 2GB of RAM, 32GB of fixed storage with a microSD card slot for up to 128GB more. It has two rear image sensors for its duo camera setup, 4.1 and 2 megapixels, the latter for reading depth information and the front camera is 5 megapixels. Finally, the integrated battery has a rating of 2600 milliamp hours. The Mi 4 has an additional gigabyte of RAM to work with, either 16 or 64 gigabytes of storage with no option to expand, and a 13 megapixel rear camera. Its front facing camera is 8 megapixels, and it has a 3080 milliamp hour battery. Connectivity options are similar as well. Both have Wi-Fi AC, infrared, and Bluetooth 4.0, but the M8 has NFC, while the Mi 4 does not. But let's talk displays. Both come with 5-inch 1080p displays. The M8's is an SLCD3 while the Mi 4's is an IPS LCD. Densities, of course, are the exact same, 441 pixels per inch, though you may feel you're getting more bang for your buck out of the Mi 4 since the M8 has on-screen buttons, which take up a fair amount of space. This ultimately comes down to preference. The clarity, color reproduction, contrast, and brightnesses are very similar. However, the Mi 4's display is noticeably warmer than the M8's. We prefer the display on the M8 as it appears more vibrant and natural. Choosing hardware between these two is difficult. On build quality and finish, we give the upper hand to the M8. It has a slightly nicer display and feels smaller even though it's actually larger. But if you're purely after specifications, the Mi 4 takes the cake. As far as software goes, both devices ship with Android KitKat 4.4.2. But to no surprise, the software looks completely different. The Mi 4 comes running MIUI 5. Unlike most versions of Android we're used to, MIUI doesn't ship with an application drawer though, of course, you can add one if you like, and this Chinese variant doesn't come with Google Play services pre-installed. You have to add that too. We're told other global versions of Xiaomi phones come with Google Frameworks embedded, and we're hopeful that the global version of the Mi 4 will as well. But MIUI is all about customization. You can download free or premium themes from the dedicated theme store. These are heavily customized and can completely change the appearance of your phone's UI. The lock screen, home screens, fonts, colors, notification shade, settings app, etc. You also get some added features like Do Not Disturb, Guest Mode, and the ability to choose how your settings toggles are displayed. Sense 6 on the M8 is one of our favorite custom versions of Android to date. It looks a lot like Sense 5, which shipped on last year's M7, but it's new and improved. Blink Feed, one of the staple features, has more channels, larger tiles, and it's more useful than ever. Quick toggles in the notification shade are user-definable, but still strongly resemble stock Android. And in the settings app, you'll find tiny little tweaks that truly make sense a great experience, like subtle themes, motion gestures, and boom sound settings. Motion gestures are one of our favorite features of Sense 6. If we're to choose between the two versions of Android, Sense 6 would definitely get our vote. 
MIUI isn't bad at all, it's just different and doesn't feel as polished. With Snapdragon 801's inside, both handsets slice through everyday activities without a hitch. Scrolling, pinch zooming, and launching applications are all smooth and instantaneous. Lag is practically non-existent, and we've experienced very few performance hiccups with either device. That said, the 1M8 felt a tad snappier in most situations. Synthetic benchmarks seem to corroborate that finding as the M8 consistently scored higher than the Mi 4. Again, we don't put much faith in benchmarks, so take those for what you will. Considering the Mi 4 isn't optimized for use here in the States, and we're comparing it to a Verizon M8, voice quality and network speed comparisons don't really mean a whole lot. Check out our reviews of the M8 for notes on how it performs on various networks in the States, and stay tuned for our full review of the Mi 4 next week for more on its call quality and network performance. We still haven't had a chance to really put the Mi 4 battery to the test, so once again check the full review next week for more on that as well. But we will say we've been really impressed with its stamina thus far. The 1M8 and our months with the device has put up some decent numbers in stamina as well. About a day of usage, but we typically need to plug in during the late afternoon to last well into the night. Without a doubt, the 1M8 takes the cake with speaker quality. Its sound is more crisp and several times louder. In fact, the M8 almost completely drowned out the sound of the Mi 4 while playing media side by side. Into a short, peppy highlight reel, made almost automatically, which gave the whole thing new life. Videos into a short, peppy highlight reel, made almost automatically, which gave the whole thing new life. Despite having a higher resolution camera, the Mi 4 actually doesn't take notably better photos than the M8. In fact, of almost every picture taken with both, we preferred the M8 camera. It provided more balanced, true-to-life photos, whereas the Mi 4 was low on contrast and often aired on the warm side. The M8 was more prone to overexposing, and it obviously doesn't have nearly as much resolution to work with, and it appears as if the M8 uses some artificial sharpening effects to make up for its lack of resolution. Either way, its photos look better than the Mi 4's pretty consistently, especially in low light. The Mi 4 is a hot mess in low light photography. The M8 isn't the best we've seen, but it generally captured far more light in the auto mode and colors don't seem to lose nearly as much saturation as they did with the Mi 4. And if we're talking viewfinder software, hands down it goes to Sense 6. The Sense camera is fantastic. The same goes for the front cameras. The M8's front camera is 5 megapixels while the Mi 4's is 8 megapixels. Higher resolution doesn't help the Mi 4 take better selfies though. The colors are dull and the images with the front camera are washed out. Selfies taken with the M8 are actually quite nice. So which smartphone do we choose? Quite obviously the M8. That's not to say the Mi 4 is a bad phone, quite the contrary. But based on availability, hardware, software, and performance, the M8 is a more complete package. Multimedia playback is noticeably better on the M8, the camera is more consistent, and so is performance. The Mi 4 isn't a bad choice, though we'd wait for a global version to ship with Google Play before we'd buy one ourselves. The most simple way to put it is, the 1M8 feels more refined, but Xiaomi's Mi 4 isn't far behind. Folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future, as well as more Mi 4 coverage over the next week. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.